When we talk about 2000s pop icons, it doesn't take long for the likes of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera to quickly bag a mention. But there's a certain powerhouse singer who always tends to be left out. Anastasia had it all, an inspiring origin story, the immediately recognizable vocals, and hot fits, completed with her signature tinted glasses. But with the music industry putting such an emphasis on young talent, particularly in the case of women, she lied about her age to get her foot in the door which probably ended up being the best move she could have ever made. Anastasia was born Anastasia Lynn Newkirk in Chicago, Illinois on September 17, 1968. When asked how her name came about, she told ABC News, My mother named me Anastasia. She thought it was such a beautiful name. And she says it's a great name because it ends up being the first name when they go from the front of the alphabet in the credits, the ones where they go in alphabetical order. She's an actress too, so I'm like, oh boy, she's really thought this out. Her father left her life when she was just three, following her parents' divorce. Even though she didn't see him anymore, she says she inherited her talent for singing from him. Her mother was also gifted in the arts as an actress in musical theater on Broadway. Despite being diagnosed with a chronic intestinal illness, Crohn's disease at age 13, Anastasia developed a career as a dancer, appearing on Club MTV in such music videos as Salt and Peppa's Everybody Get Up and Twist and Shout. In the meantime, in between time, she also took on jobs as an aerobics teacher, receptionist, hostess in a restaurant, among others, to pay the bills. In 1999, she was a finalist on the MTV talent contest show, The Cud. In the end, she didn't win, but still managed to score herself a record deal. Anastasia signed with Daylight Records, a custom label of Sony Music Entertainment's Epic Records. Years later, she would reveal that because she was over 30 years old by the time she got her big break, she definitely went through a period of feeling like it was never going to happen for her. There were definitely times I felt like giving up, like when I was fired from a hair salon in LA and could not really get a singing job to save my life. I just felt like I might as well stop and go for something I could have a career in. I was going to study psychology and social work for children. I thought if singing couldn't bring me joy, children could. But there was always a reason why I attempted to keep doing it. Another situation, another opportunity. Okay, I'll try it. It's like, why don't you stop dating? Because I know something's going to happen. The way people in the industry viewed her potential was quite discouraging too. In my early 20s, I was working as a dancer when someone from the music business heard my voice, but told me that my sound just didn't quite fit into any category. He said, you sound like Shaka Khan, but you can tell that you didn't grow up in the ghetto. And why would I? I'm white. For a black audience, my voice was too white, and for a white audience, it was too black. In addition, record companies and producers told her to say she was 23. In fact, the rules for the Cut Talent Contest were for participants to be under 30. So even before she signed on the dotted line, the untruth about her age was already out there. Over the years, she just avoided the subject in interviews until one day she decided it was time to come clean. Her debut album, Not That Kind, dropped in the summer of 2000. The album reached the top 10 in numerous countries throughout mainland Europe, the UK, and Asia and eventually went quadruple platinum in Europe, while it barely made a dent on the Billboard 200 in the US. Her debut single, I'm Out of Love, became a global hit everywhere, except the US. Her second and third singles, the title track and Cowboys and Kisses also did well internationally, but once again, not in the US. Even though she has a scar on her stomach from an operation related to her Crohn's disease diagnosis, over time she got used to it and started showing her abs. She ended up embracing her body so much that she decided to wear the bare minimum of what she was allowed to show on screen every time she got. Anastasia's second album, Freak of Nature, released the following year, put up similar numbers as her debut, achieving great success in Europe where it went triple platinum. This time around, Anastasia had an album that did moderately well on the US album chart, making it into the top 30, but none of the singles cracked the Billboard Hot 100. In early 2003, Anastasia decided to have a breast reduction because of back strain. From a routine mammogram in preparation for the surgery, it was discovered that she had early stage breast cancer. She immediately had surgery and intense radiotherapy. She also subsequently established the Anastasia Fund to promote awareness of breast cancer among younger women. The first single off her self-titled third album called Left Outside Alone was released in the spring of 2004. It became an enormous hit in Europe that year, reaching number one in Austria, Italy, Spain, and Switzerland, 
number two in Denmark, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, and Norway, and number three in the UK and Hungary. The song also topped the Australian charts, giving Anastasia her second number one in the country, where it went on to become the second biggest selling single of the year. This song really gave Anastasia her trademark sound, often referred to as Sprock, a hybrid of soul, pop, and rock. Anastasia the album quickly became her most successful album to date. Unlike her first two projects, which were released in her homeland of America, Anastasia was not. The single Left Outside Alone was released in the US, but failed to catch on. After that disappointment, the album was postponed and eventually canceled after the scheduled release date passed. By now, it was pretty clear that Anastasia's success was relegated to very specific areas in the world. But why? She revealed her own theory in a 2017 interview with a German daily newspaper. There was a problem with the record company. They messed things up with the US radio stations. I still don't know the details to this day, but the radio stations are boycotting me because they want to get revenge on the record company. Things really took off in Europe though, and then in Asia. On top of that, she wasn't even able to enjoy the financial abundance that one would have expected her to have at that point. It took so long for me to be paid the money from the overseas sales in Europe and Asia. The fees had to be settled between different companies and this and that. I only saw the money when my third album came out. It was surreal. They dressed me in expensive clothes, flew me around in a private jet, but my bank account was empty. Anastasia then switched gears and made a successful foray into the fashion world with her own clothing line in 2006. The following year, she married her bodyguard, Wayne Newton, and became a stepmother to his two children from a previous relationship. Three years later, though, they would divorce. It seems that she'll continue to carry around a permanent reminder of their time together, though, in the form of an A&W tattoo on her neck after insisting she doesn't regret getting the ink despite their split. Anastasia returned to music in 2008 with the release of a new album backed by a new label. Unfortunately, the results the project came out with were far below everyone's expectations. Heavy Rotation took on a much different style than her previous work, which Anastasia would later regret. The R&B Heavy album did hit most European charts, but missed the UK top 10. The singles were largely flops compared to the results her other albums produced. In 2007, my manager left Sony and moved to Mercury, and I wanted to go with him. They wanted me to go in more of an R&B direction, but that's not my thing. And they wanted me to work with rappers, which works for a lot of artists, but not for me. So many people try to persuade you to do things. After another four-year gap, It's a Man's World, Anastasia's fifth album dropped. In 2013, Anastasia announced that she would have to cancel her European tour because she was diagnosed with breast cancer for the second time. Ultimately, she chose to undergo a double mastectomy as well as reconstructive surgery. Over the course of her life, Anastasia has battled numerous health problems, from being diagnosed with Crohn's disease, to breast cancer, to a heart condition which she discovered she had at age 39. She takes it all in stride though, as she told the Daily Mail in 2017. I am not the total sum of everything that has gone wrong with me. I am the total sum of everything that has gone right. I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. Resurrection, Anastasia's sixth album, was released in 2014 and met with both critical and commercial success. Reviews were overwhelmingly positive, acknowledging a return to form for the singer as well as a creative resurgence. Then the opportunity to do reality TV presented itself and Anastasia knew she had to go for it. Strictly Come Dancing was just the right experience for her to reclaim her femininity after everything that her battle with breast cancer took away from her. The show also provided the perfect lead-in for her to pose nude in Fault Magazine in 2016. I was only able to do that after I'd gone through my Strictly experience because I regained confidence in my body. Before that, I would talk about my scars, but never show them. I have scars on my stomach from an operation to remove part of my intestine when I was 13 and first diagnosed with Crohn's. My cancer experience took 10 procedures and five more operations. I have big scars on my back and on my side because they had to use skin that wasn't compromised by tattoos. But my scars tell a story of survival, so they are beautiful. By showing my scars after years of hiding them, I felt I wasn't just empowering myself, but hopefully empowering other women who felt the way I did. 
Anastasia decided to give reality TV another try and came out on top as the winner of the third season of The Masked Singer Australia in 2021, competing as the vampire. After previously hinting that her 2017 album Evolution may be her last, Anastasia announced in late 2022 that she was preparing to release her eighth project in the new year. As of the making of this video, it has a tentative date set for September 22nd, 2023. In April of this year, Anastasia released her latest single called Best Days. No doubt fans will be able to hear it live on stage during her I'm Out of Lockdown tour that she began at the end of 2022 and is still in full swing today. It was originally supposed to take place in 2020 to coincide with the 20th anniversary of her debut smash, I'm Out of Love, but was postponed due to the pandemic. 